Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back, everybody. It's good to see you. And uh, we're here again with Herbert J. Pilato, uh, our expert on everything television. Herbie, good to see you again. Nice to see you guys. Always a pleasure. You know, Herbie, uh, uh, you are, I think, a pop culture icon because you have done so much around television. You've produced, been a performer, entertainment executive, certainly a, a writer. You've written over a dozen books on television. Um, and you've got your own television show, then again with Herbie J. Pilato on Amazon Prime. And now you are writing feature articles for the Television Academy website, uh, emmys.com. Is it Emmy or M-E's? Emmy, plural. Emmys.com. Yeah. So um, this is terrific. We appreciate you taking the time out of, <laughs> out of a busy day to join us. No, I, I, I love being with guys and I love television. So anything, anytime I have the opportunity to talk about it, classic television in particular, I completely welcome and embrace it. Well, that's great. You, you know, um, it seems as if, uh, and you put probably the best resource for this, is television will have a hit and then it'll be done after three, four, five, eight seasons, whatever. And uh, they keep coming back to the well, not always with the greatest success. Uh, and one of the ones I can think of, uh, just a performer that loved seeing on TV all the time, was Dick Van Dyke. And he had a wonderful show, the Dick Van Dyke show. And uh, then they brought him back, didn't they? Yeah, he was, I mean, he still is, just an amazing talent. As far as I was concerned and am concerned, when he finished the D Dick Van Dyke show, the original one, he never had to do anything ever again. <laughs> I mean, it was just so perfect. And I'm talking, he never had to make a movie. He never had to do another play. The Dick Van Dyke show was perfect. But in 1971, 10 years after the original series ended, a, in a year after Mary Tyler Moore, his former co-star from the Dick Van Dyke show, came back to, to TV sitcom land, CBS brought Dick Van Dyke back as well with the new Dick Van Dyke show. And because Mary obviously had her own show, he needed a new wife, and that would be Hope Lang. And he was living in real life in Phoenix, Arizona, and he really only agreed to do the series if he could film the show from Phoenix. So the show was set in Phoenix. He played the host of a, of a talk show, of a local talk show in Phoenix. It's co-starred uh, Hope Lang, Angela Powers as their, their daughter, uh, Fanny Flagg, as a Dick's uh, sister who worked with him on uh, at the staff of the, the show that he hosted, and Marty Brill and Nancy Dassault, the wonderful, beautiful Nancy Dassault. And that's how it was in the first two years. And then it switched in the third season. He moved, actually moved to Hollywood, back to Hollywood, um, in real life too, I think. Or I think, he, no, no, he was, he was uh, commuting from Phoenix still, but they set it in Hollywood and, be, and his character, instead of a talk show host, was a soap opera star. And the co-stars in that version of the series was Barbara Rush and Henry Darrow and Barry Gordon and Vince and or Dick Van Patten, who would later on play the dad, of course, on Eight is Enough. So the, the new Dick Van Dyke show was a noble attempt but it was, in my opinion, you know, nowhere near the quality of the Dick Van Dyke show, the original series. And everybody just gave their all to it. Um, and while Mary Tyler Moore seemed to be doing a different kind of more sophisticated comedy now with the Mary Tyler Moore show, the, Dick Van, the new Dick Van Dyke show was kind of stuck. In, in, the, in It was like a, a 60s show done in the 70s. And they... He, couldn't really elevate it yet. But whatever Dick Van Dyke does, in, in my eyes, is fine. I could watch Dick Van Dyke all day long. You know, after the new Dick Van Dyke show ended, after three seasons, he went in to do Van Dyke and Company, which was, uh, excuse me, the Van Dyke, yeah, Van Dyke and Company, which was a variety show for NBC that was amazing and, and remarkable and innovative but it didn't catch on. It was ahead of its time, probably, really. 
And then he came back again with Van, the Van Dyke, uh, Van, the Van Dyke show with his, his son, Barry Van Dyke. And it was a kind of like an old fashioned sitcom that was videotaped just as Mary was doing a new show called Annie McGuire. And then after that, of course, he had tremendous success with Di Diagnosis Murder. But getting back to the new Dick Van Dyke show in 1971, it kind of putted along for three seasons and, and then ended very controversially, controversially uh, when there was some episode where uh, Dick's daughter on screen had gone into the, his bedroom, you know, in the show and watching he and Hope Lang having sex. And apparently that was too much for the censors. And Carl Reiner had major issues with CBS, deciding to edit that. And Carl Reiner said, that's it. I'm done with the show, which was very strange for CBS to object to that because they were doing like really controversial things on All in the Family and Maud, I mean, who was talking about abortion, for gosh sakes. And anyway, nobody was happy with the way CBS handled that. Carl Reiner left the show. Dick Van Dyke wasn't going to do the show without Carl Reiner. And that was the end of that. Wow. You know, um, it strikes me how all of these permutations of Dick Van Dyke were supported by Carl Reiner and great cast members, mm. just great actors yeah. surrounding him in every turn. Yeah. And yet, and yet, between the original Dick Van Dyke with Mary Tyler Moore and uh, mur what was the murder show uh, that he did? Mur uh, Diagnosis Murder. <laughs> Diagnosis great, Murder. Great show. Between those two shows, between those two shows, yeah, I don't remember any of that. Yeah. They were, they were eminently forgettable. Yeah, un unfortunately. And there, it's a lot. I mean, what's her name? Uh, I forget. Hope I am. Well, Anne Morgan Gilbert once oh. said that was a lot of time from 1971 to 1991 when diagnosis murder. It was a lot of time for Dick, uh, as talented as, as a person as Dick is, to have not been working, mm. you know, yeah. so or working well. Um, and, you know, the Van Dyke and Company was a very good show. It just didn't, it didn't catch on because it was ahead of its time, that variety special. And the Van Dyke show was like the new Dick Van Dyke show caught in a different era. Whereas the new Dick Van Dyke show was like a 60s show in the 70s. Um, the, the Van Dyke show was a 90s show or was a 60s show in the 90s. So <laughs> it was all very strange. Also, I think one of the problems that the new Dick Van Dyke show had and I didn't particularly like it was that it tried to be the Dick Van Dyke show with a new wife and sort yeah. of a, a new whereas Mary Tyler Moore was a whole new atmosphere. Yeah. She was single. Uh, she uh, just, just a totally different show. Uh, and I think what they tried to do was recreate the uh, Dick Van Dyke show into the new Dick Van Dyke show. And that probably doomed it because with the wife. He, he, he dumped that one for this one and, and so on. I, I just agree too close. 100% with that, Art. I agree 100% with that. I think it's very intuitive, you, uh, intuitive of you to say that. You know, Hope Lang was adorable and beautiful and talented, but she was no Mary Tyler Moore, and she did not really feel all that comfortable in doing the comedy. What was interesting was that years later, Mary Tyler Moore called her up and said, you know, Hope, since we both played a Dick's wife on TV, I think we should be friends. And they became friends, you know? And I, I talked with, um, you know, many of the producers of the, who had to do with the new Dick Van Dyke show for the article that I'm doing, or that, that's, that's on Emmys.com. And, you know, Hope was just uncomfortable, you know, with the whole comedy thing. And I had suggested, well, what if Mary would have made a guest spot on the new Dick Van Dyke show, and, and that would not have gone over well. I mean, that just that's like when when Suzanne Plachette showed up at the the final episode of the of of the Newhart series, yes. you know, where she was on the Bob Newhart show, and then she she did the final episode of the Newhart series. Well, Mary Fran, who had played Bob Newhart's wife on that show, she was not pleased that they ended yeah. uh, the Newhart with Suzanne Plachette. 
Yeah, yeah. It it listen. It's a, a it's a very personal thing for all of those actors, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting that uh, you've got a, a phenomenal talent mm. like Dick Van Dyke, and of course people are going to try to repackage him. Yeah. Uh, and as you say, once the Dick Van Dyke show is over. He's in the history books. He's in our yeah. hearts. How, how you he never gonna, really had to do anything again. You know, we we'd still watch those reruns today. But in and Art, yes, and Art made a good point. They should have, like, I don't know, made him a widow, a, a widower, or a, a, you know, a, a single guy who never got buried, and yeah, um, you know, and did something, and had maybe Carl Reiner might not have been the right man to be behind the creative force of the new Dick Van Dyke show. Maybe he should have gone with completely, maybe Norman Lear. I always wondered how it would have been if Mary Tyler Moore and MTM Productions produced the new Dick Van Dyke show. That would have been interesting to have James L. Brooks behind the new Dick Van Dyke show. That yeah. show I would have liked to see. Yeah. Well, uh, there's just uh, so much um, uh, history that you have uh, we always appreciate because it's not just, well, it's Dick Van Dyke or it's Mary Tyler Moore, but you know all the little bits and pieces behind it, the, the spice, if you will, uh, for the meal. Uh, but uh, you write regular articles about this. Where can people see, uh, uh, I know that John mentioned at the very beginning, uh, where, where's uh, uh, places that people can go see what you've written about uh, these various programs? Well, certainly at Emmys.com, if you just go to Emmys.com and do a search for not, for my name, Herbie J. Pilato, you'll see all the articles that I've been writing over the years, really since 2015, but more, more, uh, you know, um, on a week, on a monthly basis in, in recent times. But you could also go to HerbieJPilato.com and there is a television academy Emmys.com link on my website, which you can find all the articles through there as well. Great. Thank Good. you. Well, we really appreciate it. Uh, you sharing your expertise and uh, it's a fun conversation. Always fun. Thank you. Thank everybody. you, guys. Nice to see you again. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.